I'm going to New York, baby. We're finally moving. In eight sleeps, we're going to New York. You want to go to New York? Your daddy's in New York. Okay, so you heard the kids. We are, in fact, finally scheduled to move to New York. Now, it has been the most complicated, honestly, horrific journey the last five months. Oh, and hold on. This whole time, Quinn and I are agonizing over every decision we've made because, you know, at every turn, we have no idea if it's been the right one. But I'm genuinely dying to know at what points you might have made the same decision or a different decision or if you might have seen something we hadn't in the moment. Okay, so back mid-March, you know that Quinn was finishing up his last year of medical school. In March is the match. So he ended up applying in orthopedic surgery, which he still wants to pursue, um, but he ended up matching in general surgery. And so of course, the very first thing we started doing is looking for a house. Honestly, not too long after we started looking, we really found a house that would be a good fit. The commute was really reasonable to Quinn's work. It had a really phenomenal dual language Spanish immersion program, which I feel so passionately um, about giving that opportunity to our kids. And of course that was a really, really nice perk for this house, but it was also in a really wonderful neighborhood. So we put in an offer on this house, uh, they accepted it. Right away, they were really, really aggressive about a very fast closing. And we kept getting like these threats from our realtor saying like, if you don't sign this contract today, we're gonna pull out and we're gonna go to the next buyer. And we finally get the contract signed and sent over to them and that night the seller dies. It's like, in what universe does this actually happen? But our realtor kept telling us like, the death isn't official until the death certificate is recorded. If you can get the new contract re-signed and sent back over before the death certificate is recorded, then it will be grandfathered in and we won't have to wait for the house to go into the probate process. So we hustled our bustle and got all of our ducks in a row and the house still went into the probate process. Even though it went into probate, we kept being reassured again and again. Our attorney assured our realtor that the paperwork would only take six to eight weeks to complete. Uh, there's nothing to worry about whatsoever. Not a problem. So like, maybe we should have known better. Anyway, so we're getting ready to move across the country. So we sold everything. I mean, kids' beds, the kitchen table, the couch. You should have seen our house. It was wild and crazy. And we had camping chairs and, and folding tables and the kids were eating dinner on baskets turned upside down. So then May begins to roll around. And in the back of our minds this whole time, we knew that our contract said that the closing date would be on or about May 15th. And we haven't heard anything from our attorneys. We're supposed to be moving 3,000 miles away with four kids, four and under, in like two weeks, and we've heard nothing. So we spend a couple days trying to get a clear answer to finally be told that there is absolutely no way we would be closing in two weeks. This was the first time that someone had shot down the idea of this house like working out. So June comes along and we had made a plan that I would go to Washington with the kids and we would crash with my parents. So mid June comes and we're trying to move out of our Boise house, which ended up being a whole lot harder than we thought it was gonna be. We thought we were so mentally prepared because we'd been talking about it forever. But when it came to like walking through the house there at the end, and looking back at it for the last time and hugging our friends goodbye. I mean, our friends and neighbors literally carried us there at the end. And then just looking back at like really our first family home, like three of our kids were born there, getting Quinn through medical school. That was a lot. And it was like, wow, we have gone through a lot in this house. Anyway, that was just a side note. You gotta do what you gotta do. So Father's Day weekend, we were, had been packed up and we drove to Vancouver. We unloaded the U-Haul that night into my parents' garage. It was so late and we were so exhausted. But the next morning Quinn got up 
got on an airplane and he flew to New York. Luckily, Quinn was able to find a room with someone that he could stay with until our housing situation was figured out. Then just a few days later, he started his residency and can I just tell you what a stud of a doctor Quinn is? There were several times the first week that he was given a chance to demonstrate his skill or his knowledge or to teach someone, just given the chance to shine. He felt so nervous and I just am so, so incredibly proud of him. He has worked so hard for this. I've always known that he's He's got it, but it's nice to see that brightness and that confidence come back to him. So his residency program is a wonderful fit for him. Okay, so he starts his residency program, July starts to roll around and he's doing his thing there and I'm doing my thing 3000 miles away with the four kids and just the month goes on and we're getting a whole lot of nothing. After two months, nothing. So as you can imagine, we're feeling antsy and anxious about it. Quinn's done biking to work every day to come home to someone else's house while his family is on the other side of the country. And of course, I'm sending him videos this whole time of the kids and, you know, Nelson starting to crawl and babble his first mama and dada. And Ruby just, the girl finally started talking. What, Ruby? Tell me again. Yes, you do treat. All done here. And then the big kids and all of their fun summer adventures. I mean, so many sweet moments for all of the kids. Look at how big these orcas are. Wow. Now I see the whole waterfall. You can see the whole waterfall? Yeah. And where it's splashing is called the punchable. Tell daddy what you're doing. He's FaceTiming the kids and showing them the skyscrapers and his hospital and Ooh, That's it. right there is a skyscraper Mama can look at a skyscraper you see Oh my goodness It's disappearing in the it's disappearing in the, they're disappearing in the clouds We're FaceTiming him while we're at the beach and showing him us flying kites or at wild waves, playing in the water. We're doing the very best we can to stay connected. Well, now the beginning of August rolls around and even though Christian's only four, in the state of New York, you go to kindergarten if you turn five before December 1st. So he's starting school in less than a month and we've still heard nothing. Now we're entering the period uh, where we should be starting to create a rental agreement with the sellers. So we contact our attorney to contact their attorney to get in touch with the sellers so we can start this rental agreement. All the while we've sent several emails to our attorney and haven't heard from them in over two weeks. We're irking over here and now we're in this period and we're like, let's get to New York, baby. Let's get this show on our road. We are ready, so ready to get back together. Well, a few days go by and we're really starting to feel nervous. And Quinn's talking about our mess of a situation with his coworkers, and he's encouraged to talk to one of the higher up dudes at the hospital who may be able to pull some strings. So right now, Quinn's working night shifts. So he gets off of work and he calls me and he tells me that and he goes to sleep. So then while he's sleeping, my phone rings and it's the sellers and they're calling to get started on a rental agreement. I mean, hallelujah. Thank the Lord. Well, in the conversation with the sellers, it turns out that the reason our house is still stuck in the probate process, there is a stepsister involved in the will, which in the beginning we were told would have absolutely nothing to do with the will and it would 100% not be a problem. Apparently this girl does have some say in the matter. Nobody knows who she is and apparently nobody in this family got along and so nobody even knows how to find this girl. So every single time the seller asks his attorney, 
how much longer? He says three months, because they can't find this girl. If that doesn't sound like bad news, I don't know what does. Regardless of all that happening with the sale of the house, the seller is willing to draw up a rental agreement for market value of another comparable property. There's just no way. There's no way we could afford that. And we told them that. We told them that, like plain and simple. All the while I tell Quinn the things and when he gets to work, he is bombarded with emails and people that are all like, go talk to the guy, go call the guy. Whoever the guy is, the guy really wants to talk to Quinn. So Quinn finishes his shift and he calls the guy and the guy got us a home. So that morning we had nowhere to live. And by the next morning, we had two places to live. And it didn't matter which one worked out. We were just completely overwhelmed with relief. Our family would have somewhere to be together. Okay, so you're almost caught up, okay? You're almost caught up. No matter which one ends up working out, the house or the apartment, we have somewhere to go. So since we have somewhere to go, guess what we did? We started making plans. So immediately we scheduled um, for some movers to pick up all of our stuff to get it to New York. So I've been packing that stuff up for the last two or three days and I'm so exhausted. So we scheduled for someone to come pick up my car um, and transport it over to New York. And then one week from today, ah, we are leaving for New York. We're gonna be together. We're gonna be done with this crazy phase and situation. And we will be together. Those kids will have their dad back. Good Atlanta. This last year, they have been without him for six months. Half of this last year. It's gone. And we're over it. We're over it. I think I took like the first sigh of relief and like danced with Nelson in the garage for the first time today in too long. And I am just so excited. It's coming to an end. Anyway, I mean, that's really the whole thing, the whole shebang, the whole mess of what it is. But I don't even care right now because when one week from today, I'm gonna be in New York. I'm going to New York, baby. That's my accent. You think I'm gonna make it in New York? I think we're gonna do fine. I'm still really curious if you haven't told me yet where you would have chosen something different or maybe you would have made the same calls. That is a wrap for today. You know we'll have another update for you soon. We'll probably be on Instagram. So check for an update there, at Carnahan Fam. Thank you for joining us, caring about our crazy story enough to watch all the way to the end, and we will see you again next time.